na nga isip namin dead and taste. Where should we go from here? No? And what will be our role towards the end of time? Okay? And this is entitled, The Call of the Eleventh Hour Workers. And we will be dealing with two parables. The parable of the wedding feast and the parable of the householder. Una na ito makaigsunan ang parable of the wedding feast. Makita na ito ni siya sa Matthew 22, verse 2 magsugod. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Huh? Nagpatawag na siya na itong mga, iyag, mga invitado. Huh? That's the first call. Unang tawag. Unsang response sa mga ginapang tawag? They would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. That means to say, this is a more enticing call now. No? My, fatling, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Pero kung say response, gyapon sa mga ginapang tawag. They made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. No? Wala niya baliwala ah. Nagibaliwala na nilang invitation. Ang uban, nangatura sa ilang farm. Ang uban said, dito sa ilang mga negosyo. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. No? Sa game mo, ipampatay pa ang iyang mga sinugo. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. And their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye find, bid to the marriage. No? So unang tawag, wala panumbalinga. Ikaduhang tawag, wala niya kung panumbalinga, ipampatay pa ang mga minsahiro. So sa yung gimo? Giyurot niya papatay to iyang mga ipang imbitar o ang ikatulong tawag, lahit na ang iyang gitawag. So muna yung giingon makaigsunan nga, two calls and a third. Ang iyang ginapang imbitar, tawag niya kaduha, kung mo reject lang gihapon, ang ikatulong tawag, lahit na iyang pagkatawag. Nakuha ninyo ang pan? Nakuha ninyo ang pattern? Okay. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both good, uh, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. No? Maayo ug daw tan. Ang ilang ipang imbitar. No? And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw that there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. So unsa gid tanan, gipatawag maayo daw tan, pero unsa ang requirement? wedding garment nga silang tanan gyud magsuot og wedding garment no? and he said unto him friend how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless nga nakasulod ka man ganhing wala nang suot og og bisti pang kasal no sa ato pa wala nang suot og motif no lahi ang suot og then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, kung sa'yo pasabot ni Ine na parable mga kaisunan? Okay? Dili ta mo interpret sa itong kagalingan. No? Kung wak man tayo makita dito sa Bible kung saan ito pag-interpret dito ta sa spirit of prophecy. Ingon din eh. The parable of the wedding garment opens before us a lesson of, high, of the highest consequence. By the marriage is represented the union of humanity with divinity. Kung sa'yo pasamot sa wedding, sa marriage, ang panagiusa sa tawhanon o sa Diyos nun. It is the marriage between Jesus Christ and His Church. It is the oneness of Jesus Christ with His people. It is the union of the divine and the human. 
It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Isa pa ba? It is the indwelling of the presence of Christ by His Holy Spirit in His people. No? This is what is the representation or the symbolism of the marriage. No? How about the wedding garment? It represents the character which all must possess who shall be accounted fit guest for the wedding. What's the other one? Garment? Wedding garment? Character. Representation sa character. No? Ang kinsang character gani? Ato bang kaugaling ang character? Only the character of Jesus. That's the only thing that we can wear for that wedding. No? And in this parable, as in that of the Great Supper, are illustrated the Gospel invitation. Ang sadaw, pasabot gani sa totality gini sa parable? It's about the Gospel invitation, its rejection by the Jewish people, and the call of mercy to the Gentiles. Ah, ang pasabot din din ang parable din, muna ang Gospel message, o yun sa pag-reject ni sa mga sa sa Jewish people o ang subsequent call of mercy to the Gentiles. But on the part of those who reject the invitation, this parables brings to view a deeper insult and a more dreadful punishment. No? O sa ito po? O sa ipatang ganyan mga eksunan? Unang tawag, di-reject. Ikaduhang tawag, di-reject. Di ilang basta-basta ng rejection, di pampatay pa, di pampatay pa ang iyang mga mensahero. No? So, yun din eh, kinsa tong naghimo niya tong kinsa ang unang mga magbubuhat na gamit sa gino para sa unang pagtawag sa iyong katawahan. Yun din eh. The call to the feast had been given by Christ's disciples. Kinsa tong iyong gigamit pagtawag? Iyong mga disipulo. The Lord had sent out 12 and afterward the 70 proclaiming that the kingdom of God was at hand and calling upon men to repent and believe the gospel. But the call was not heeded and those who are bidden to the feast did not come. Kinsang, kinsa ang mga magbubuhat sa first call? Sa unang tawag? Ang katong 12 disciples o katong 70 no? during the time of Jesus Christ. Okay? How about the second call? The servants were sent out later to say, Behold, my, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage. Kanos ano siya gihatag ng message? This message, born to the Jewish nation after the crucifixion of Christ. No? But the nation that claimed to be God's peculiar people rejected the gospel, brought to them in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amaw din na siyang naging onday ngayon. My fatlings, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. The invitation is very, very enticing because the message came in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's more enticing now. No? Yung siya, agiihaw na ako akong baka, akong mga tinatambok. No? That means to say, ang minsahe na sabi ka ron sa gospel is coming to the Jewish nation under the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet, unsay ni tabo? The nation that claimed to be God's peculiar people rejected the gospel brought to them in the power of the Holy Spirit. And many did this in the most scornful manner. And others were so exasperated by the offer of salvation, the offer of pardon for rejecting the Lord of glory, that they turn upon the bearers of the message there was great persecution. Many both of men and women were thrust into prison and some of the Lord's messengers as Stephen and James were put to death. Ang second call, you reject. O di lang basta-basta rejection ang mga apostoles o ang mga disipulo na itong panahuna ilang ipanglutos o ginapampatay. No? Starting with Kinsa to pinakaunang martyr? Stephen. Stephen. No? 
they were put to death. Kung kung sa inyo tapong mga igsunan, thus the Jewish people sealed their rejection for God's mercy and the result was foretold by Christ in the parable the king sent forth his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. The judgment pronounced came upon the Jews in the destruction of Jerusalem and the scattering of the nation. Kano sa nanahita po? 40 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In AD 70. No? Halos nahulot si nagpatay dito sa Jerusalem. O ang nabilin, ikatag-katag sa nagkalaing-laing nasun. No? So, sa'yo na po? First rejection, second rejection, o ang ikatulo, lahit na gitawag, o ang katong nag-reject kanila, they were destroyed. Nakita niyo yung pattern? It is, the principle is two calls and a third. Kaya doha pagkatawag mo ng sadyang angkat, sa diyang ang katawan sa Diyos, mag-apo sa sides, pag-atawag ko niya, kinig ka doha, huwag ang ikatulo, lahit na niyang pag-atawag ko. Huwag ang katong nag-reject, will end up in destruction. Nasabdan? Okay? That's a pattern. Now, there are prophetic parallels. But ipasabot, history repeats itself. The principles in history are bound to repeat because we haven't learned the lessons of the past. Yun din eh. It's a great controversy. The work of God in the earth presents from age to age a stri striking similarity in every great reformation or religious movement. The principles of God's dealing with men are ever the same. The important movements of the present have their parallel in those of the past. And the experience of the church in the former ages has lessons of great value for our own time. Kung unsay ni Tabuk Karon, ang mga prinsipyo ni Inay na hitabo na sa una. Nagkalain-lain ng mga naong sa tao, pero maurang prinsipyo ha. Maurang apatay. Sa panahon ni Kristo, ang naabay mga parisiyo? That was the old Jerusalem. That was the old Israel. How about us? The group of people who is still keeping the seventh day Sabbath. Did, we keep, did they keep the Sabbath back, way back then, the seven-day Sabbath? Yes. How about us now? Are we not called the modern Jerusalem or, or, or modern Israel? Well, ang karang Israel na sila mga parisiyo, how about sa ato karun? Nasaan? No? Kung sa unang panahon, adun ay ginapanglutos, karong panahon na naaba sa kagin panglutos. No? It's the same story all over again. Okay? So, nga itong tanawan makikisunan, atong i-graph itong kung ano? Atong i-graph itong kining kung saan eh? Atong principle niya, itong two poles and a third. The marriage was made at the start of the 2,300 days prophecy. Ha? O, din yung makikisunan are components of the 2,300 days prophecy. Makita na ito na. Ha? And the marriage was made at the starting of the proclamation of the rebuilding of Jerusalem that was in 457 BC. And then still, the people of God apostatized and Jesus Christ was baptized in AD 27. That was this, the end of that. What's that the prophecy? 70 weeks prophecy. No? 69 weeks prophecy. Mo and the end of the 70 weeks prophecy din sa AD 34. Okay? Di naman sa kung ako explain no? Okay. So the first call occurred, started by John the Baptist, the 12, and the 70 disciples that were sent by Jesus Christ before his crucifixion. The second call started during the Pentecost, and it was still rejected. And the rejection culminated in the death of the disciples starting with Stephen when he was stoned. Okay? So, duha katawag and the call 
went to the Gentiles. Tungod kay dinhi pa lang nandagan na ang mga disciples ng gawa sa Jerusalem o kung nag-asa sila paingon dito usab nagpaingon ang maayong balita. Okay? Kita niyo kan? History. So the third call now went to the Gentiles and in AD 70 Jerusalem was destroyed. And ang kato mga Gentiles nagapad bilin sila o nagapadayon sila and Christianity developed during that time. Kung asa sila nagpaingon throughout Asia Minor hangtod nga to sa Europe dala din nila hangtod makaigsunan nga very early in the history of Christianity there was this what we call the development of the man of sin. The man of sin makaigsunan is the It's about the principle of the man of sin. It's about man controlling the work of God. Which eventually blew up during the time of the church of Thyatira na himo siyang full scale na yun na papal system of religious government. Na himo siyang papado. No? Nga doon ay usa ka tao na magkontrol sa bulhaton sa Diyos din sa yuta. No? And that man of sin started mga eksunan sa diyang ang church dito sa Jerusalem they viewed themselves as the center of the Christian world tungod kay naa sila sa Jerusalem. And they tried to control Paul no? nga kung unsa ang ginapanghimo dito sa gawas gusto nilang mo-report dito sa ila. No? And they really tried to control Paul to the point nga si Paul ilaging gipa unsa na? nga aron makwel lang gyud ma- mawala lang gyud ang mga story story sa mga Hudyo nga si Paul nagtudlo na sa pagwala sa mga kwan sa ilang mga kasubuan no ilang dipugos gyud si Paul nga muyukbo dito at tubangan sa templo ug sa pagyukbo ni Paul dito pag adto ni Paul dito sa templo na ilhan niyo siya dito siya gidakop og nahuman ang iyang buluhaton sa Jerusalem ug ang iyang pagpangwali dito na sa mga presyuhan na dayon hantod nga giabot siya dito sa kwan nakaabot siya dito sa kining Roma hantod nga nagwali siya dito ni Nero o gipatay siya pagkahuman no so mona na po there was a development of the man of sin no during the early times of Christianity eventually makaigsunan no ang kining Christianity nahimo siyang nagapostasize starting from Pergamos unsa ganitong pan church in Pergamos unsa nga lang na the compromising church na compromise na siya during sa panahon ni Constantine o sa tenenta bo gibautismuhan ang kwan gibautismuhan ang iyang mga kasundaluhan and by his sana gipakita siya simbolo sa langit ng cross o giingnan siya sa iyang pananaw by this sign you shall conquer so gipambautismuhan niya ang iyang mga kasundaluhan ang ilang mga shield gibutangan ng cross o nanghimo sila mga Christianity no O tungod kay nahimo sila Kristiyano nga wala gid na usab ang ilang kasing-kasing ang ilang mga mga tawag na ang ilang mga customs ang ilang mga idolatry ilang mga idols ni pang-Christianized lang. Si Diana gihimong Mary, si P, si si Jupiter gihimong Pedro, no? Ngayon na nadala ang ilang mga customs nga na sa sulod sa iglesia o nag-apostasize ang iglesia and it went into a full-blown tayatera magaigsunan. No? So, nag-apostasize ang Christianity o ang Diyos dilipid magabiya sa iyong katawahan, magpadalagi na siyang mga tawag na magpabalik ka niya. No? In the 14th century, nagpadala sa ang first call niya to sa Christianity na kaigsunan occurred during the 14th century Reformation. No? And the second call occurred during the 16th century Reformation. Kabantay mo to sa mga reformers during the time, sila ni Luther, sila ni Zwingli, sila ni kinsa pa to Jerome de Hakayo no and unsa ni tabo mga eksonan starting with kwan katong si eh Luther no sa dia iyang gilansang iyang kwan ang thesis dito sa usa ka church no starting from that there separated 1 million protestants during the time no and Protestantism goes forward and eventually the Roman Catholicism was 
wounded in 1798. Sa diyang ang Santo Papa, Gidekop ni, kisa yun to? Berthier. No? And Protestantism went forward kung nagpabilin usab ang Roman Catholicism as the church in Tayatera. Okay? So, pagamot mga igsunan, sa panahon, pati ang Protestantism mga igsunan, abag ko ta magpadaya din ni mga igsunan. No? Let us discuss now kung unsa usab ang development sa Seventh-day Adventist Church. Asa siya nagsugod. But before that, para makita na itong mga igsunan, atong tanaw sa ding parable of the householder. Okay? Just just keep your thoughts on this, ha? Just hold it in your thoughts. Asa na ta, asa na ta karoon sa itong history? Na? During sa Protestantism, na na ta sa 1798. O sa isunod, Ana? 1800s. Na? 18, particularly, 1844. Okay? Now, before that, let's go to the parable of the householder. Ikan din eh. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all, all day idle? They said to him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. No? So, ang mga pangunta ng mga isunan, kinsa man yung householder? Unsa ni ang iyong vineyard? What is the marketplace? Who are the laborers? And we know that the penny a day, ang ilang sweldo is eternal life. Okay? So, now, unsa ni siya ang kanang first hour third hour, six and nine, o oh, kanan gitawag na eleventh hour. No? To understand that better, mga isunan, atong tanahon karoon diun sa pagbahin sa mga hudiyo ang ilang adlaw. Okay? Ngayon si Jesus, are there not twelve hours in a day? Pila day ka oras ang ilang isa ka adlaw? Sa adlaw nila? Twelve hours. No? John 11.10 But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled because there is no light in him. So, buti pa sa buti mga egsunan, ang dosi ka oras nila, uh, dosi ka oras ang ilang buntag. No? And John 9.4, ingin din I must work in the works of him that sent me while this day, the night cometh when no man can work. Unsa ang kanang portion na adlaw? Unsa ay asa na lagi na dedicate? A time for work. Uh, ano na ba'y bulhaton sa gabi eh? Wala. No? The night cometh when no man can work. Pila ka oras ang adlaw? Well, yun ano ang ilang pagbahin sa adlaw magkaigsunan. No? Ito nga sa atong 24 oras, muna ilang adlawan. Pila ka oras? 12 ka oras. Ang ato karon is alasay na sa buntag. Tayo sa alasay sa gabi -e. Pero ang ilang bahay na ng kaigsunan, pag subang sa adlaw, that's the first hour. Ulo ka oras, bikan na na, alas noibi sa ato, muna ang ilang third hour. Kita niya? Di ba, pagabot, bikan din to, muna ang alas size. Pagabot nga na, tunga-tunga, sa alas dosi o sa alas size, alas noibi. Tulo ka oras na siya ang daganon sa adlaw. Pagabot na sa dayon o another 3 hours, muna siya ang alas 12 na to. Muna ang ilang itawag na 6 hour. Unong ka oras, ikan sa pagsubang sa adlaw. Nasabdan? 6 hour, another 3 hours, 
ninth hour. No? And the eleventh hour is one hour before sunset. Nasabta ng pattern? So, sixth, first hour alas size, ang third hour alas noibi, ang sixth hour alas dosi, ang ninth hour alas stress, ang eleventh hour alas singko sa hapon. Muna ang ilang pag-divide. No? Like for example, unsa sa orasa gi, ilang sang si Kristo? Ilang sang? On the third hour. Nagit-ngit ang kalimutan. From the sixth to the ninth hour. Bikang sa alas dosi, Ayun sa alas tres hapon. Kung sa orasa na matay si Kristo, alas tres, that's the ninth hour. No? So nasabta ng ilang portion sa adlaw? Importante ka niya. Now, who is the householder? So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hot tears? Hot it tears? He answered and said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Kinsa daw ang what? householder? The son of man. Can we confirm that? That he is the householder? Right, subject lessons. The householder's dealing with the workers in his vineyard represents God's dealing with the human family. Sakto ba? Okay, kita mo gamit sa itong kagaling ng interpretation. So what is the vineyard? The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Another is, in Psalms 4, 1, Psalms 24, 1 ni siya. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Can we confirm that? Christ subject lessons. God claims the whole earth as his vineyard. No? Though now in the hands of the usurper, it belongs to God by redemption no less than by creation it is His. Okay? Now what is the marketplace? The words of Christ apply to the church. What words? Why stand ye here all day idle? Why are you not at work in some capacity in His vineyard? Again and again He has bidden you Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, ye shall receive. What is the marketplace? Church. That is the? Church. Church. Okay? So, buti pa sabot, every time siya magkuha o workers, asa siya magpaingon? Church. To the church. Asa niya ipadala? To the world. And to the house of Israel. Ganto sa iyong katawan. Ganto sa tibok kalimutan. Now, who are the laborers? The Lord appointed other 70 also and He sent them two by two before His face into every city. Now, ingon din siya, the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest that He would send forth laborers into His harvest. Who are the laborers? Those whom He has sent. From the church, ang iyang mga disciples, o ang iyang mga apostles, iyang mga pinadala. These are his laborers. Okay? How about us? Where are we now? In the church. And where does the Lord goes to hire laborers? In his church. Are we potential hirelings? No? <laughs> Can you say now yourself? No? Kita na ba ito itong kagalingan? Asata, kinsata? No? What are we doing? No? Usay giingon? Usay gitubag sa pag-abot niya dito sa church. Usay giingon? Why stand ye here all day? Ay, then, ganun wala man mo yung gibuhat. No? Usay gitubag sa mga tao wala may nag-hire na mo. No? Actually, our coming here is to represent Jesus Christ to hire for workers. It's our role here. No? To make us realize who we are. Okay? So, now, 
Who are the early morning laborers? Ingat din eh. When he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, no? dito siya naging sabot for a penny a day. And we know that a penny a day is eternal life. No? So, kinsa man iyang gitawag very early in the morning. Ingat sa Hagay 2.4 Yet be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord, and work according to the word that I covenanted with you when we came out of Egypt. Kinsan ni iyang mga tao ngayon ipatrabaho? Kang kinsan siya naging sabot, naging covenant for a penny a day, for eternal life? Kinsan ni iyang ipatrabaho? Yes, when they came out from Egypt in the wilderness, dito siya naging sabot una. No? Ato ba man yung mapagmatudan? Right, subject lessons. The Jews had been first called into the Lord's vineyard and because of this, they were proud and self-righteous. Insa yung yun na magtawag? Oh, Dio. Katong mga strilites dito pa sa kamingawan, muto ang iyang unang gitawag. No? Ano na ba yung bago silang instrument na magamit nila? Yes. Yatag kanila ang written na kwan? Written scriptures dito una. Nagsulat na si Moses dito ang Pentateuch na lima kalibro dito bisundan. Yatag usap kanila ang sanctuary system sa ilang pag-worship. Natuan na dito naka-embed na ang pamaagitan ng sariyo sa kaluwasan. Okay? Dito siya naging sabot una. Now, and niabdo ba siya sa iyang, what? Niabdo ba siya mismo sa iyang kining marketplace? Yes or no? Did he personally came to his marketplace? Yes. Yes, he was standing there at Sinai to give to Moses the Ten Commandments. Di ba? When the Lord calls his people, He personally visit his church. Amen? Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, kinsa karon ang iyang gitawag at the third hour? Mark 15:25. And it was the third hour and they crucified him. Who was crucified at the third hour? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came again to his marketplace, to his church, starting from the time that he was baptized in the River Jordan until his death in the cross. He was crucified at the third hour. Alas mo ibis bunta. He personally came there and he was crucified by his people. And during that time also, he started to call his people at the third hour. And And 50 days after, iyang gibukbo ang balaang espiritu makiksunan kung nagsugod sila pagwali starting at the third hour. And Christianity started during that time. That was, kinsan ni sila? The third hour workers. Kinsan man ang third hour workers? The apostles, the disciples, the very first Christians during that time. So ang first hour workers, Where the Jews, where the Israelites, the second hour workers, ang niyanto ba si Jesus ngato? Niyanto ba si Jesus ngato? Yes, he was there in the wilderness, no? And niyanto ba si Jesus sa iyang marketplace, sa iyang church during the third hour? Yes, he was there and he was crucified, no? And they were the third hour workers, no? How about the sixth and the ninth hour workers, mga isunan? nga halos wala need siya ikuan wala, wala siya distinction ay yun ito the 6th and the ninth hour as if the 6th the ninth is dependent upon the 6th they're bound together no? so this cannot be the, the the 14th and 16th century reformation era mga ikuan why? because there was no truth there no new truth no? Ang sa first hour worker, ang ilang bagong kamatuuran na gihatag kanila is the sanctuary system. Dito sa pag-abot niya so sa iyang katawhan, sa third hour, 
adun na sa'y bag-o na sa'y kamatuuran. In which, mauna sa'y ang ining explanation karon sa ilang sanctuary system. Nga katuday ang ilang ginahimo sa unang panahon, muna siya ang kinabuhi, ang kamatayon, huwag ang pagkabanaw ni Kristo. No? Kato ilang ginasaulog ng mga kapistahan sa una, Passover, Feast of the Unleavened Bread, Feast of the Weave Shift Offering, kana di tanan, muna siyang kinabuhit ni Kristo. Muna ka tusag doon ang ilang bagong kamatuuran nito. Nang ilang ding misaya ng gihulat, muna dahil si Kristo. Muna ito ilang mga bagong truth sa una. But during the, the, the times, during sa protestantism mga kaigunan, walay mga bagong kamatuuran na gihatag kanila. No? And the reason for this is that the reformers were bringing back to the surface truth had, that had been given but lost for centuries. But without the work of the reformers and the protestants, the 6th and the 9th hour workers would not have been able to perform their work. No? So, sa ito po mag-aigsunan during the 6th and 9th hour worker. No? Nito ba si Kristo sa iyong church again? No? Nito si Kristo sa iyong church but not on earth. He was there in the most holy place. They were expecting mga exonan during that time ang kamatuuran is ang ilang bagong kamatuuran is ang fulfillment sa 2,300 days prophecy na si Kristo mubalik na ni ining kalibutanan. They were expecting that. No? And these six and nine hour workers mga exonan iyang representation na ini is the time of the Millerites movement and the subsequent development of Seventh-day Adventism. No? Naba tayo prueba niya na mag-exonan? Din sa Revelation 10, 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stand upon the sea and the earth. What is that little book? That little book is the book of Daniel. It's already open, di ba? Ang katung katung kwan katung mga vision ni Daniel iya tong ipasirado sa Ginoo. O wala ginto na sabti ni Daniel. O katung little book karon is now open in the hand of the angel. Mo ipasabot niya na masabta na nila unsa tong mga prophecy ni Daniel with regard with regards to time. Especially ang katung kinatibuk-an sa 2300 days prophecy. No? And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly better, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Why? The little book is the book of Daniel. Kung ilang gituuhan ka itong mga kaisunan na mubalik na gin si Kristo at the end of the 2,300 days prophecy, October 1844. Kung sa din, ilang itong nasabdan, di ba ang pagsabot sa Biblia, di ba? Mura ng atong pagkakanon. It was sweet in the mouth. It was sweet in the mouth for them because the thought of Jesus Christ coming literally back to earth is very sweet in their mouth. Uksa na yung ila tong gitulon after sa 1844, October 22, 1844, it became bitter in their stomach. They suffered a bitter and great disappointment because Jesus did not come here. Okay? Muna yung pasabot din sa kwan mga exon, Revelation 8-9. No? Muna ang gitawag ng Millerites movement mga exonan which suffered a bitter disappointment. No? And what is that little book? Ito din yung seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. John sees the little book and seal. Then Daniel's prophecies have their proper place in the first and second and third angel's message to be given to the world. The unsealing of the little book was the message in relation to time. That little book was the book of Daniel, which discussed about the 2,300 days prophecy. Gitawag siya open because masabda na nila kung saan ipasabot sa 2,300 days prophecy the message was in relation to time. No? The comprehension of truth, the glad reception of the message is represented in eating of the little book. 
the truth in regard to the time of the advent of our Lord was a precious message to our souls. But bitter disappointment came. No? And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I heard it, eaten it, my belly was bitter. They suffered a bitter and great disappointment. But in verse 10, he said unto me again, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and people. And this is the birth now of Seventh-day Adventism. After 1844, ang nabili lang yun pila ka book, 50 lang yun katao, and they started to prophesy and preach again. O kung unsa di ipasabot niya itong 2,300 days prophecy. Dito na nasabdan niya, dilit na ipaingon si Jesus niya niya, kung dilit dito sa most, holy place. Niyan ni ba si Kristo sa yung church? Niyan ni Gihapon pero sa yun ang ilang pagsabot. Dilit mismo din ni Silka, but in the most holy place. Was there a new truth meaning six and nine hour workers? Yes. The understanding of the 2,300 days prophecy and ang katuusap na uban pang mga kamatuuran na nalimta na during the time of the protestantism. Okay? So, din yung mga eksunan, kung sa ang mensahe karong na ilang ginadala sa nine hour workers, kinsa ang kwan, kinsa ang, ang six hour worker, the Millie Rights Movement o ang katong mga nag-wild tenan na mubalik ng ginoo no? starting kung ato nang i-haog usap dito sa lang mga kapistahan mga kaisunan for 10 years muna siya ang katong 10 days nga patingugo ng trompeta bago ang Day of Atonement o ang Day of Atonement ang katong ilang pagtugtog sa trompeta mga kaisunan started in 1833 for 10 years nag-aminsay sila na mubalik ng ginoo and 1844 dito sa nagsugod ang Day of Atonement. Okay? So, kung sa karang ang, ang dala ng mensahe sa Third Angel, ah, kung sa dala karang sa nine, nine Hour Worker, what are they going to prophesy again? Muna ang ilang mensahe na kaigsun na makita na to sa Revelation 14.6 hantod sa 9. The Three Angels Messages. So, the third and the sixth Hour Worker Atong balikan, atong i-review gamay. Ang first hour worker kinsa? The Jews. Ang second hour workers kinsa? Apostles and the disciples. Ang sixth hour workers kinsa? The millionaires movement. Muna siya makaigsunan ngayon. Ito ako siya. Six and ninth workers tungod kay halos sumpay na gina sila. Ang ninth hour workers mo to sila ni survive gikan sa millionaires movement gikan sa six hour workers. Ang problema karon kay nagtawag na sa kutro ang Ginoo, no? Supposedly ang regular call niya is first hour workers. Tulo ka oras na na magtawag na sa check line sa third hour workers. Another 3 hours that's a regular call sa six hour workers. Another 3 hours another regular call nine hour workers. Supposedly, no? Ang katong 9 hour workers, siya mo mo tapos gud sa bulaton hangtod to 3 hours ang yang ang gihatag sa iya matapos unta niya paingon dito pag south sa adlaw. Ang problema aduna siya gitawag lain. The 11th hour workers. What does that mean to you? Ha? The 9 hour workers is not going to finish the work. That's why within the call of the night hour workers, the Lord is going to call another set of workers one hour before matapos ang buluhaton. Nasabdan? Okay? Sa muna yung ilang mensahe, gidala sa kwan? Sa third hour worker. Ah, night hour worker. Okay? So kung ato ni siyang i-apply na sa karon ang principle sa two calls and a third, ang second to? First call, gibalibaran. Ang second call, gi? Balibaran ng sab? O ang third call is lahi na ang gitawag. Now, asa ta na sugod ka ganina? Sa Protestantism. Eventually, nag-apostasize ang Protestantism, they become Sardis, the dead church. And once, mo ganit siya, ang pattern ganit, once mag-apostasize sa katawan sa Diyos, 
magtawag na sa siya. Pila katawag? Dili lang isa. Duha katawag kung ay katulolay na ipagkatawagun. Now, ato nang i-apply ka sa history sa 7th and 9th season. Hindi sa Sardis, nag-apostasize na yung church. Okay. Let's have a break. Ato na siyang i-prioritize sa kami Julie Sudman. So, ang ihatag ka ninyo karoon is last na ganyan mga eksunan. Kalaman si an olive oil. Kung sa'y purpose sa olive oil, Dok? Ha? Bone siya mo libre kayo sa inyong kwa? 